Welcome to our broadcast. We are thrilled that we have the opportunity to come into your life today. And I hope today that God speaks to you, is everything that you need for Him as our time together. Enjoy. Thank you for joining us for Lakeshore Church from Byron, Mississippi. This week, Pastor Jay Frazier continues his sermon on the components of prayer. And now we join Pastor Jay. Just yesterday, I was watching, I had been, I'd been studying a good bit yesterday, and I'm sitting in my lazy boy, and, and, and everybody had sort of left, and all of a sudden, something came over my phone, and, and when I looked at one thing, there was another one. It started rolling. Before long, it was political stuff, and I'd watched about 10 or 15 minutes of stuff, and it was both sides of the aisle, and it was both political parties, and it was all kind of craziness, and in about 15 minutes, I felt oppression, and I don't preach much on this because I don't want to lose people, but I'm telling you something, I felt oppression. I mean, the enemy is in the room. I mean, I can sense things come over me like you just wait. You get up there and preach on prayer. And you get up there and you keep dividing the church and it's not going to end well. And I had all these thoughts coming. And it's the world that we live in. We live in a jaded world. If we don't watch it, we'll almost want to build a fence around ourselves so nobody else can get in. But that is not what God called us to do. God needs to break our heart. God needs to soften our heart and for us to realize that he's called us not just to have a head knowledge, but to have a heart. Let's move with compassion because of the state of the world and what it's in. I love the story of Mary and Martha and Jesus after Lazarus had died. You remember? I do love this story because I would have done something totally different. Mary and Martha, they meet Jesus and they're crying and they're weeping and wailing. And he's just showing up and he knows he's going to raise him from the dead. You know, he's just sleeping. I'm going to raise him from the dead. And they're just, they're wailing. You know, two sisters whining. You know, if I'd have known I was going to raise him from the dead. I'd have said, would y'all just get out of the way and stop all this mess? I'm going to show you something today. But it says he wept. You know why he wept? Because Mary and Martha were hurting. And we miss it now. Listen to me. We miss it because what we do with people's weeping is we find out why they're weeping. And if it doesn't add up to something we think is worthy of it, then we pass it off. So we become non-compassionate and uncompassionate instead of being moved by what people are going through regardless of how they got there. We do a little case history and we say, well, they haven't lived right. and They have act like the devil. they made terrible choices. So I'm not going to be moved. And we're living in a society, folks, and let me tell you something, and in the church where we should be moved. And I'm saying I'm the president of the club because you can get so jaded that you're not moved the way God wants us to be moved. And let me tell you something, if you're not moved, you won't pray. Hmm. We pray for stuff that moves us. Even if it's wrong, even if it's stuff that we're full of ourselves, it still moved us enough to pray for it. So today I want to just remind you, we need to have competence, but we also need to have compassion. Listen to this. This is the interlude. Our head and our heart, both of what we are shit, says today we better be praying. Look around, folks, at the world situation. The whole outlook. We need God, and we need a God movement in the worst of ways. Hmm. Wow. Today's a little bit different. Uh, some time ago, Brian Tomlinson asked us about prayer. Knowing where we were going and thinking along these lines, and today's that day. Brian, if you'll get ready. Brian, in just a moment, is going to pray for us. He's also lead us in prayer. He's also going to announce something pretty unique about prayer that's just come down the the, the pike here just yesterday. And he's going to share with you something. Then he's going to lead us in prayer, and we're going to continue on. Brian, the platform's yours. Thank you. Um, A friend of mine, we were talking, and she said, I wish we could just gather at Barry's Cross and pray. I said, why can't we? She said, well, I don't know. I said, well, who owns it? So she said, well, let me call. Ends up... It's private property. Mr. Barry owns the cross. He built it. And uh, so she talked to him and said, hey, you know, we'd like to pray. And uh, we're going to keep it small, you know, friends and family. He said, if we're going to do this, we're going to do it big. He's like, I I know the mayor. I know the governor. I know the police department. I know state troopers. He said, do not worry about security. Do not worry about the city. Do not worry about publicity. You all just get here. He said, I will handle all of that. You know, he, he, so he has promised police presence, uh, security, 
for Christians to come and, and, and pray. Um, it's not an organized group. It's just me and a friend that said, hey, let's do this. It's not affiliated with any church. Um, it's just people coming together and, and, and Mr. Barry giving us the opportunity to do it. So August 8th at 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., um, we're going to have people who, if they want to come, they can stay in your cards if you want to, or you can come outside, you can social distance, whatever you want to do, I don't care. But if it's 10 people, if it's 1,000, it doesn't matter. Uh, whatever God wants it to be is what it's going to be. And so we're going to all gather whoever is there. Everyone's invited. If, if you don't want to be there, just reserve that time um, for prayer at your house or just with us. So, again, write it down, text yourself, tell your friends. August 8th, it's a Saturday morning, uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. If it bleeds over, we told him we didn't want to do it and disrupt his business. He said, you don't worry about my business, y'all just get here and pray. He, he actually told my friend, I've been waiting for people to do this. Um, so, you know, I've been pushing for prayer on social media, and there's a song that says, you know, someone asking God why, and he said, well, well I created you. And I was pushing for someone else to do it. And then God finally said, Brian, that's why I created you. So I said, okay, and we're going to do it. So uh, I'll lead us in prayer. God, we, we come to you broken. We want to pray for our cities, our states, our country. Our churches, our schools, our city's officials, the leaders of the, of the country, God. God, many are hurting, many are sick, a lot are living in fear, there's a lot of anger, and there's a lot of hate that the world just needs to get rid of. And God, I say it's time, it's time to send your angels when Jesus was on the cross, he could have called 10,000 legions of angels to destroy everybody and, and take them down. That's who I want battling this evil and this hate, God. Amen. The most powerful beings in this universe are the angels, and they can destroy and beat back any demon and any devil that's out there. And, and God, I, I just pray that you send them to fight for us in the spiritual world so you can lift the fear from people's hearts, the anger, the darkness that is encompassing not only the United States but the world. Lord, I come to you and I ask all this in your son's name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Two more today. If God's going to do anything for you, you got to have confidence that he can do it. There's got to be hope. Um, when I think along those lines, there's over and over in the scripture when Jesus walked on this earth, when he, got, he was fixing to do something for someone or somebody asked something of him, he would ask, do you believe? Again, with Martha, he asked that in John 11. The, the demon-possessed uh, boy that the, the father came to Jesus in, in the gospel of Mark, he asked, do you believe? The blind man, men, when he was walking in and he ended up healing them, he turned to them and said, do you believe I can do this? And somewhere in our walk with God today, listen to me, no matter how bleak it is, no matter what's going on in your life, somewhere if God's going to do something, it comes down to do you believe God can do it? You can't be saved if you don't believe that God can. It's in there. Belief is part of it. Along these lines, we today, the, all these people that he asked about believing, they had him in person and he asked them that. Today, you, have, you and I have him in the spirit world do we believe that God can? Do we believe God can? My life verse is that he is able to do, now unto him who is able to exceeding abundantly more than I could ever ask or think of him according to the power that works within me. Somewhere I've got to believe that God can and God wants to. Something I've told, somebody, they told me this before I went to Israel and since then, they, they said this before we went, they said, when you go to Israel, it will change your life forever. From reading the Bible, when you see a story, something will come up and you'll say, hey, I was there. Lately, for me, it's the city of Capernaum. And uh, we went there, and, and uh, just the other day, I was reading the Bible, and it says, and Jesus left there, and he went to Capernaum. And I went, hey, I was there. And all of a sudden, you it takes on a whole new meaning because there. And I don't say that, hey, bu building me up, and look at this. But I want to show you something that one of the most moving things, if not the moving thing that happened to me when I went to Israel, and this is it. 
That is the picture right here of the Wailing Wall. You got it up there. The Wailing Wall. This is the only remains of the second temple. That's the reason it has the, the, the place it does for the Jew. People come from all over the world and they go and pray at the Whaley Wall. Right here, there's a section. I didn't show that this morning. There's actually women on this side and men on that side. We're going to try that next Sunday at church. But anyway, really wouldn't matter with Facebook in the parking lot, would it? Here's, here's the thing. For the Jew, to me, in their mind, this is as close as they're getting to God's presence of where the temple used to be. Listen to me. I've got great news for you today. If you know Christ, you are the temple of God. And so, okay, what does that mean? <laughs> that means that you have the confidence today that you no longer have to do like that. Today, you and I, we don't have a high priest that is not touched with the feelings of our infirmities, infirmities but we have a priest today, a high priest that was and he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. And because of what Jesus did as our high priest, today you and I can come boldly to the throne of God. And think about that for a moment. Boldness. Not boldness in who I am, but boldness in who he is. And that sounds like hope to me. That sounds like confidence. And we need to maybe have a moment where we realize God is in control. You know, could you just realize that today? If there's one thing God's affirmed for me the last couple of days is I've got it. Had a friend of mine just text me some stuff. I don't know what we're going to do. And I have my little, my little mug up there. <laughs> and it says, I got it. I took out my phone. My kids have finally taught me how to do it. I took me a picture and I sent it to them. And it says, I got it on the side of that little coffee mug. At the bottom of it, it says, God. Well, with confidence today, I want to tell you that God has it. Amen? One more. There's also conflict. Probably should have been the first point. This is one of the, this is just down. But I'll tell you something. If you're going to do anything for the cause of Christ, there's a price that you've got to pay. There's always conflict. The last thing the enemy wants, we can talk about ESPN and the lack of ball games, whether it's going to be college football or not. We can talk about whether the Braves are ever going to play a game with fans in the stands again. We can talk about all kinds of stuff. That the enemy could care less about that. Let me tell you what he cares about. What, what gets his attention is when a child of God decides that they're going to set aside consistent consecrated time and they're going to get a hold of God Almighty somebody said it does he have to even know you're up to make a difference you know what I mean by that someone said that when you're really where you need to be with God that the enemy has to say something like this uh oh he's awake <laughs> she, she, she's conscious so that means she's fixing to get a hold of God he's fixing to make a difference in the day I got to line it up I got to be on my, my best there's a conflict Today we need to be reminded that what the enemy wants is isolation. If I can get them by their self, if I can think of all, they don't tell anybody, they don't confess anything, they're all by their self, they're not living, they're not living in community, they're all by their self, he's got us. And some of praying we need to be reminded is sensing him. Some say, what about that? You're talking about being alone with the Lord and all that, going in the closet? <laughs> I'm reminded that even in marriage it says for a time, period of time that you go along with you and the Lord, it says after that let them come together. I'll leave that for the marriage series. Listen, sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes no answer comes. And we got to be reminded in prayer that it's not just a grocery list that you share with the Lord and you go getting it off the shelf. As I already shared, there is a, there is a God's will and God's not going to go against his will. But there's a lot of times that God wants to do a lot more for his people and a lot more for community, a lot more for the church. But we don't line up the way God wants us to. That's his will as well. I must be right for right to come from praying. Wind down. Listen to this. Did you know, I wrote this down so I wouldn't miss any of it. I want to share it with you. Did you know that God longs to know you, to hear from you, to have a cool of the day experience with you? I want to remind you, though, the cool of the day, God would come in the garden with Adam and Eve. Listen to this. He didn't come all the time. It wasn't 24 hours a day, seven days a week. God came in the cool of the day. They had things to do. I know that just wrecks some people's view of heaven. But we're going to have stuff to do in eternity, too, by the way. But we're not going to wear any mask. Anyway, <laughs> his heart yearns for a relationship with humanity. He went to great lengths to redeem the garden atmosphere. When we kneel in his presence, we are kneeling before a holy, righteous God that loves us. We share our heart with him. The God of the universe longs to enjoy the fellowship of our presence with him. And he's waiting to walk with us and talk with us and perform in whatever capacity we need. He knows 
what we need. One of the neat things through ministry that we've uh, come to deal with early on in ministry, there was so much guilt I had, so much guilt. Still occasionally it happens. We're better now than we used to be, but early on in ministry, someone would say, Brother Jay, would you pray for me? And I thought, oh yeah, I will pray. And they'd walk off and I'd get a call a couple weeks later and say, God, that prayer was answered. <laughs> they passed the test. And I'd go, man, I didn't pray a time. Then we talk about that. We're supposed to be a house of prayer. We really didn't have a prayer ministry. And years ago, the church where I pastored, we started a prayer ministry. One of the strongest things I've ever seen. I saw, I saw times people went to the prayer room to pray, and I'd be preaching. And I saw times where they'd come, and it was the old normal kind of church. It wasn't like this, and it was just one door back there. And I'd see people's faces come to the door and look through the window. And as they were looking through the window, they were anticipating the altar call. And I found out later that there would be somebody that somebody would mention, God just placed somebody on my heart that's at church today that needs the Lord. And, and they would be interceding for them. And I'd see that person, they would watch that person walk the aisle and accept the Lord because they had been praying for it in the prayer room. And so I saw some great things happen. And when God moved on us, Susan and myself and my kids, when we moved here, one of the things that stayed on my heart was about prayer ministry. When I looked into it, it was, I mean, yeah, we prayed. You, so you guys pray. I'm not taking anything away from anybody. But we didn't have an established thing, and it, it, we wrestled with it. We tried to do some things. It didn't work. It was on my plate, and it didn't work. I failed miserably at it. And we did the prayer room, and that helped. And, and some little things we did along, but nothing. You know, we're still dealing with this. People ask us to pray, and God's called us to be a house of prayer. But a few, few years back, a, a couple came to our church who had been in Lakeshore years before, Cecil and Angie Fisher. Miss Angie, it wasn't long before just conversation or whatever. You could tell she has a heart for prayer. And if you've been around her, you know she does. And, and for 30-some-odd people that are involved in the ministry and do a phenomenal job, they, they intercede in prayer. It blesses my heart. Sometimes it happens way after I go to bed or right when I'm getting up that that thing will ding. And somebody's asked somebody to pray, and we have dozens of people praying at the church for them. But, folks, we need a lot more. We all need to be people of prayer. Amen? And I'm saying on whatever level, you, you might not get involved in some of the different things they do, but everybody can pray. And it's needed. And what I want to do is give some application. I didn't have four things today for you to apply all this to. But we all understand prayer. We've already given you that. But I want to encourage us to pray. I want us to raise the level of, of effectiveness, raise the water. And, and when you raise the water, all the boats rise. You know what I'm talking about? Let's raise the water of prayer in our church. Because I want to tell you something, folks. If we don't, <laughs> I don't even want to think about it. You know, we need a revival. We need God to show up. I believe it's getting dark enough that light can be really shown in our world today. But we got to do that, and I think it's prayer. And uh, she's already sent me a text and said, don't talk much about me, but I'm, I'm thrilled. I really am thrilled with what goes on. And Lakeshore 714 Prayer Ministry. Of course, 714 is out of Second Chronicles. And today I've asked Miss Angie, she's here at both services, Miss Angie, would you stand? Miss Angie Fisher, she is over our prayer ministry. She brings leadership to that. There are 30 some odd, I could be off 10 or 12, 15 folks, but uh, there are many people already involved in it. But I'm going to encourage you today, on whatever level you can pray, see Miss Angie, okay? You say, well, I don't know her, and we're fixing to dismiss in the next five minutes. Call the church office. We'll give you a number, okay? I didn't feel right about putting her cell phone number up on the screen. But anyway, serious about prayer. Miss Angie told me, but just tell you, the first texting prayer that I've ever gotten was from Miss Angie. Not too many months ago, they surrounded me in the prayer room and prayed for me. It means everything. Push the enemy on notice that we're serious, folks. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Probably in a better place than I've been in, in in a few years in this arena of prayer when it comes to our church because I think we can more facilitate when a need comes up better than we've had been able to in years past. So I invite you to be a part of it. You know that system. If you want to know how that goes about and who to contact, then we can let you know that as far as the church goes. Here's where I want to end. Seek him. Seek him. Chase him. How long has it been since you sought the Lord? See, I think a lot of times in prayer it's become an anomaly. It's become something that we just do to pass the time. It's something that we do because mom and daddy did it or the preacher told us to. When was the last time you sought the Lord? When was the last time you sacrificed something in your life so that God would know that you're serious about spending time with Him? Here's a thought. Cut the TV off. Cut that social media junk off. You might realize you'll have a revival right there in your life because oppression will leave you alone if you quit reading all that mess. Seek Him. 
Speak to him. Hmm. Great conviction comes over my life. I tell people it's a discipline. It's easy for me to read God's word. I enjoy all the insights of that, but it's a discipline for me to pray. Isn't that great to hear pastors say that? It's a discipline. I have to make sure. And I'll tell you how you know that you're in, <laughs> when you're praying is something else will come in your mind. The enemy doesn't want you to do it. He don't want us to get a hold of God. He, don't care. he doesn't care if you and I talk about stuff all day long. Just don't talk about the Lord and don't talk to the Lord. Speak to him. And then I want to encourage, because I know there's a bunch of prayer warriors that are listening to this at home. There's a lot of them in here. There's a lot of them in the, in the, in the parking lot. I want to encourage you this. This is where I'm hanging at, where the Lord's been hanging out in my life. Sense him. Quit just sharing your list with him. You know, sense him. Be still and know that he's God. Hmm? They that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. See, it's not this go make a mess of it and then God will help you fix it. No. I don't need any amens, but all of you know that I'm a wordy person. I'll, I'll talk to a fence post and I will answer for the fence post if it don't talk back. But listen to me. Sometimes Jay's learning even at 54. Sometimes what God wants me to be is just be still and let me pour on you and pour in you what you need quit trying to figure it all out quit getting all jacked up by what's going on in the world and just center it on him hmm. since we've changed all this up it's the longest sermon but i think it's needed i've tried to cut it all out and it's worse than me cutting it out i think here's what i'll say and we'll go in just a minute i'm going to have you stand to this reference i need to seek him I need to seek him. I need to quit chasing everything else. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? Loses on soul. You know, I, I don't, Brother Jay, you, you peg me. <laughs> Sounds like we're in the same club. We talk about everything, but as someone said it, we talk about everything under the sun. We just don't talk to the sun much. I, I need to speak to the Lord. I need to be still. I just need to be still. And let God do what God wants to do. Quit pushing. Paul, why are you kicking against my direction? Why, why do you kick against the goads? Why are, you, why are you pushing against the very thing that I want to do in your life? Be still. He's able to do exceeding abundantly. And I'm going to ask you just before you and the Lord, I, this morning at 8.30, I don't even think I looked up because I don't want to be compromised. I don't want you to stand because Brother Jay's looking or somebody else is looking, but from your heart. If God's moved on your heart, folks, we're doing all this stuff and we wonder why the world's coming apart. We're doing all this stuff that's affected the church. Why do we wonder it's happening? It might be we're not doing the disciplines that God wants us to do. And it's become a giant today before we pray hmm. yes out in the parking lot I don't know how to do that in the car it's hard to stand in the car I don't know if folks want to stand in the den with the rest of the family around them or here but you acknowledge I need this I need to seek him I need to speak to him I need to sense him that applies to your heart we invite you to stand we're going to close in prayer Let's pray together. Lord, you know our heart. Lord, make us aware people of prayer. It's amazing in my life, I could name some prayer warriors right now. I could name some people that if the worst news came, the worst news, I knew who I'm going to call. Lord, that doesn't come from on high like a spiritual gift. It really comes by day after day after day. We chase you. Lord, help me to chase you like you're the love of my life. Help me to 
speak to you like you're the keeper of my soul. <laughs> Lord, help me to sit you like you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You're the Redeemer. You're the Messiah. You're the morning star, the lily of the valley. God, I give you praise and glory in the house of God today. Lord, I stand publicly and ask you one more time, God, to forgive me for times that I've not led effectively. Lead people in places that might be good, but good is the opposite of great sometimes. Help us to be people of prayer. Help us to learn how to pray. God, help us in this place to be a house of prayer. Pray for Miss Angie, all the ones that are already undergirding us. God, lead them to further heights with you as they lead us. And then every one of us, God, will be people of prayer. Lord, I thank you today for your presence. We give you praise and glory. Raise the level of prayers in our church. And God, we know all the boats will be lifted then. All the other ministries, all the other outreaches, all the other evangelistic things will, be, will happen when we're a place of prayer. Lord, we're going to go a lot of different directions in the next few minutes. I pray that you be with each home. God, keep us safe. Keep us sanctified. Lord, keep us sanitized. Keep us, God. Lord, our church, somehow, some way that we can shine brighter in these days of bleakness and darkness like better than ever before. And God, we're going to start off the day. We're going to start off the event. We're going to start off the issue on our face before you, asking for your direction and guidance. We thank you, Lord, for today. Continue as we go our separate ways to not only name the name of Christ, but bring glory and honor to that name. For it's in that name that we pray. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. You're dismissed. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Thank you for being with us today. We trust that God has spoken to you. Um, just let God do what He wants to do in your life. Again, we're thankful for you being a part of it. We look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.